For those of you guys that have been following the Sightshed podcast and in our community for a while, you know we do enjoy doing some pretty darn cool things. Uh, our Learn and Travel program has been around for a few years now, and we effectively take trade business owners across to amazing destinations uh, where we can either surf or ski. So um, the last few years, we have been uh, traveling to New Zealand on ski, uh, learn and ski programs. We've been traveling to Japan earlier this year on a ski and learn program. That's 2018. And then uh, we also traveled to the Maldives for our first surf and learn in 2018. However, uh, in February of 2019, we are holding yet another ski and learn, and it's going to be in the lovely Furano in Japan. And uh, Furano is basically up in the Hokkaido region, which is powder heaven. So for all of you guys that want to come along to that, and I thoroughly encourage you to, because they are such cool events. They are just the best. It's a tax deductible trip. You get to go skiing or surfing in amazing locations. And this time, this time we're heading to one of the best powder resorts on the planet. So uh, guys, head across to the siteshed.com forward slash events. And you can see the link there to the upcoming event. Uh, it's limited tickets, guys. Obviously, we've got to secure hotels and that kind of thing. So we can only take so many. Uh, we launched it a couple of days back and it is already filling up. So if you want to come, um, I thoroughly encourage you to get in there and get your deposit secured. Uh, if you've got any questions, you can hit us up on the Facebook group. The Sightshed podcast is made possible because of Tradie Web Guys, creators of beautiful websites designed specifically for tradies and contractors. If you're tired of dealing with web designers that have no idea about your industry, then head across to tradiewebguys.com.au and reach out. Like many companies from all over the place, you'll be very glad you did. When we talk about creating a business that turns a million bucks a year or better still, a million bucks a month, wouldn't it be better to take that advice from somebody who's done it or is actually doing it? Today, you're joining us for part one of the creating a million dollar design build business. This guest that we have on the show is currently doing that. His business turns between 15 and $20 million a year over in Canada. And it's certainly an interesting conversation. The first episode is called Building Won't Make You a Million Bucks Marketing Will. And that's the one that you're tuned in today to hear. And following on from that, there's going to be Stop Working for Free, Time is Money. And then the final episode is going to be Building a Model That is Scalable. You guys are going to absolutely love this series. It's coming from somebody who is implementing this. He's in the trenches. He's actually doing it. And it's a, it was an amazing conversation. So I know you guys are going to love it. Make sure you guys leave some comments. Please leave us a review on iTunes, do we ask for. Um, and if you want to be part of the conversation, head across to Facebook and join the Site Shed private group. Uh, you have to fill in a few questions and the lovely Talia will let you in. And then you can be part of the conversation and you can chat to the gentleman that I've got actually on this show. He's in that group and he's very active. So I uh, look forward to seeing you in there. Enjoy this episode and get out there and go and build yourself a million dollar business giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to Toolbox Talks on the Site Shed podcast. You are joining me, Matt Jones, for episode one of the Creating a Million Dollar Design Build Business series. Um, I've got my man, Ferris Elzabag. That's yeah. wrong. Get, run through that. How do you say it? Elzabag. Uh, Elzabag. Go though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ferris, all the way from Ottawa in Canada. Welcome to the Site Shed. Awesome, Matt. Thanks for having me. Super big fan of the Site Shed. I uh, love what you guys got going on there. Yeah, thank you, sir. And uh, great to have you as part of our community. Obviously, you're a pretty active contributor in there, which we all appreciate. Yeah, hopefully I don't piss off too many people just getting uh, <laughs> my opinions across there. But uh, I love I love all the energy that uh, that you guys got going on there. A lot of insightful opinions and, and, and people giving a lot of great information. Well, I mean, I suppose that the beauty of you know that community is it's so filled with people that have got results, you know. So when people like yourselves comment on certain things, you know, that makes a lot of it, it makes a lot of sense because it's not just some expert, you know, talking about what should be done. It's you talking about what you have done and what works, and that's the power of it. So by all means, if it pisses people off, 
you're probably doing something right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I like to think so, at least. <laughs> so, um, man, we've been chatting for a while, and this series, I suppose, has come come about as a result of a you know a couple of conversations that we've had both online and offline. And um, you've certainly got some pretty epic results coming through within your business. And there's a lot of uh, listeners out there that are in. Uh, I suppose similar verticals wherever they are around the world and they'd like to maybe also get some similar results. So, you know, I've invited you on the show today to share some of your experiences and hopefully instill a bit of your knowledge and wisdom into, uh, you know, the people wherever they are that want to learn some of these traits. Your business is called Ottawa General Contractors. Do you want to give us a bit of a rundown on that? Yeah, for sure. So, uh, yeah, we've got Ottawa General Contractors and we've got Vancouver General Contractors. Uh, The two make up the Canadian General Contractors group. Uh, At one point in time, we were in Toronto and Calgary as well, but uh, we kind of grew a little too fast and decided to take a few steps back there. Mm -hmm. Um, Essentially, what we are is we're, we're a design build firm. So, we do everything from A to Z, from uh, architectural plans to uh, pre-construction, to construction, to building, the whole shebang. And, and, and that's kind of what we've coined as a, a design build firm. Mm-hmm. So we've, um, it's not uncommon here in Australia. We, we, a, a lot of the builders out there have been doing that themselves. They've been builders want to take control of that process here, especially for the benefit of their customer to make it all like that one point of communication. I know a lot of our clients have started to do that. One of them just bought two of the two of my clients have recently brought in-house architects into the mix. And it just makes it a lot easier and a lot smoother when they're dealing with the client as such, because I haven't got to refer to a third party. And I think it's quite a smart idea. But of course, the whole question that's, um, you know, will be a right, be, uh, that keeps arising is that around, you know, cost and you know how to make sure that that's a profitable, um, I suppose, avenue to take in regard to you know the comparatively just outsourcing that work to somebody else. So I'm pretty interested to hear what your your take is on that when we get into this series. The th- there are three episodes that we've broken this down into. The first one is going to be called "Building Won't Make You a Million Bucks." Marketing will. Um, I know you're a marketing whiz, so I'm looking forward to hearing um, your take on that. Uh, the second episode is going to be "Stop Working for Free." Time is money. And then the final episode will be building a business model that is scalable. Now, obviously, we, you've, um, you've helped us design that series structure. Do you want to give us a bit of a rundown as to why you think those three episodes are paramount when we're talking, uh, I suppose, creating a million dollar design build business? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, building won't make you a million bucks marketing will. I really feel like uh, a lot of contractors, uh, a lot of business people in, in, in the industry underestimate the importance of marketing. Mm. And in my, imp- in my opinion, uh, and we can talk about it a little bit later on, it's the most important part of your business. And that's the only way you're going to be able to generate, you know, a million, two, three, four million bucks. And we can get into that. You know, yeah. the, the, old, the old school method of just relying on referrals is not going to get you a million bucks. Right. You know, the, the second episode of stop working for free time is money. I think a, a lot of people can relate. Everybody is expected to do free work and, 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 and time is money. But once, once we figured out how to stop giving free estimates and to start getting paid mm. to prepare these estimates, a huge shift in our business happened. And I, I'd like to elaborate on that during the show. Mm-hmm. And, and, and obviously that relates to building up your company, right? And then the third one, building a model that is scalable. You know, build a, a scalable model isn't just about sales and marketing. There's there's a lot of pe- a lot of pieces that are, a lot of moving parts, if you will, that need to align together to be able to make sure that you know the sales that you are producing are profitable, and mm-hmm. and, and that's part of making uh, a bit a, building a model that is scalable. Yeah, exactly. I think that's you know a, a pretty valid point. Like typically, I think this this um, series as a whole is probably going to appeal to the, the type of listener out there that wants to scale, but you know has a few of those pain points, especially in the space of well, you know, facilitating growth can be. I mean, I, and I'm interested actually when we get into when we get into that episode a little bit. I want to talk to you a little bit about how you know the business in Toronto and Calgary. Uh, weren't so much a success because of that growing pains that you had because that's I think a lot of our guys, especially our builders, like a lot of our builder clients are so freaking busy. Like they're booked out years in advance. 
<clears throat> which is great, except like I just question, you know, if they could if they could grow effectively and scale effectively, you know, they'd be able to deliver on those lead times a lot better, which means they could potentially be adding a lot more people to that funnel and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But a lot of them have that conversation around, well, it's a lot easier for me. It's a lot more profitable for me to manage six guys on, you know, across two sites than it is to manage, you know, 100 guys across, you know, 20 sites or whatever it might be. Yeah. And from my experience anyway, that is certainly true, and ex- except for the fact, you know, if you want to become, you, you know, you want to become bigger and you want to become a lot more profitable, then you, you need to implement things like systems and processes that are in order that will help you, I suppose, f- facilitate that growth. And that, that kind of seems to be a bit of a bottleneck, I think, within the industry, which I am working hard on to alleviate. <laughs> yes, I see that. I see that. A lot of exciting things with Treaty Mate Pro. Yeah, exactly. So why don't we jump into the first episode? Um, this one is going to be called uh, Building What Won't Make make you a million bucks marketing will who are we typically talking to in this conversation is it are we talking to the business owner here are we talking about people that uh the managers the site foreman like who, who are we directing this at yeah it's, it'd definitely be directed towards the business owners you know the uh the renovators that uh, uh probably got a crew or a few crews and uh uh are the ones that are basically making decisions on where their resources are being spent right yeah. Okay. Cool. So I'm interested. I suppose before we dive in too deep, what like what your experience is here? I mean, I know your business is really profitable, and I know that you put a lot of resource into marketing. So I'm just curious as to suppose before we jump into the the nitty gritty of you know the the framework behind it all, how how you apply marketing towards your business, and you know the the comparatively you know where your business might be if you focused more on I suppose the building aspect as opposed to marketing. <laughs> Well, I mean, if, if if I was focused on just the building aspect and not the marketing, I would have probably ran out of money by now and not be in business, <laughs> to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I always look at things from a sales and marketing stance first. Mm-hmm. I, you know, a little bit of background information. I'm, I'm not, I guess I'm a, I'm a guy, a construction guy by default. I've been doing it for eight, nine years, but before that, um, I'm, I was just a business development sales and marketing uh, mm-hmm. professional. So I, I approach this from a lot, uh, from a different perspective from most of the listeners out there. But, uh, I mean, th- sorry, th- does that answer your question or did you? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just another cu- part to it. Yeah, no, I'm just curious now to see, um, I suppose, like within your business, you know, you're an extremely profitable business there. What sort of, I mean, how does the marketing look? How does the marketing look within your organization? Like what is, you know, Canadian general contractors do um, from a marketing perspective that, you know, makes, makes you guys a million dollar business? Cool. That, that, that's a big, big question for sure. And I'll, uh, I'll try to uh, scale it down a little bit, but just so everybody has an idea of kind of the size of our business, we've got uh, between both cities, we do, you know, somewhere between 15 and $20 million in revenue a year. We've got about 50 or 60 employees and probably another 50 or 60 in the field. Are they all employed or are they contractors? Uh, so, so the so the fifty or sixty are employed. The other fifty or sixty are subcontractors, but for the most part, they only work for us. Gotcha. So we've got agreements with them that that uh, that pr- they where their primary uh, client and uh, you know subcontracting work. We'll act- I'll talk a lot about that in probably segment three, building a model that's scalable because okay. it becomes very important to grow the company in that sense when you're subcontracting work. Um, but our, our marketing mix, you know, it's 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 a beast. You know, yeah. it it really starts. Uh, and you know, we've got an awesome website. We've got awesome branding. Uh, we've got different means of tra- traffic mm-hmm. to the website. You know, we uh, the the image and in, in, in our reputation management is top notch, mm-hmm. and it's it's how all those kind of come together that form this marketing engine mm-hmm. that literally produces millions of dollars worth of leads a month, mm-hmm. like literally, you know, and it's all how they come together. So, uh, you know, you can break down each one of those, you know, significantly, and we could probably talk about it for an hour, but it's how they all align. You know, there's there's I think I think a lot of people in the industry you know, don't really see the bigger picture. And, you know, they kind of think as marketing as, all right, maybe one ad here or one ad there, or maybe a decent website. But yeah. it's kind of all how it all comes together. So what, I, what I've coined that over the years is the ecosystem. I like to call it the, the uh, digital ecosystem or the marketing ecosystem, because I think you're right. You've, like it really does. And this is a, a big disconnect. Like guys say, oh yeah, I do marketing. I've got my logo on the side of my 
on the side of my truck door and so <laughs> and I'm like yeah, okay cool well I mean to be fair that is marketing but then yeah. when, you, when you look at the ecosystem like how does that when you drive past somebody in your car you know how, how does them looking at that logo on the door what's the journey like what's the ecosystem they typically will I mean I know in, in Australia statistically before they call the phone number they see under the logo they're going to jump on their phone and search you so you know w- what does that journey look like for them once they you know if they jump on their phone can they find you can they find you know a website that's reputable can they find you know case study can they find all this sort of stuff which is which adds to the conversion factor of them pushing then the phone number and calling yeah exactly and 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 that's exactly it you know i like to think of business as like a like an oil pipeline if if you can imagine like a pipeline and and the pipeline having different compartments the first compartment where where the oil flows in is the marketing compartment. Right. So if you're really missing the first compartment out of your whole pipeline, well then there's there there's a lot that's that you're leaving on the table. Mm-hmm. Right. I think I think traditionally this industry has been run off of your reputation in the community and through referrals. But with the emergence of online marketing in the digital age, uh, you know, with Google being, you know, as, as popular as it is the last 15, 10, 15 years, mm-hmm. there's it, it's really changed how uh, um, the industry is run. And, and a few players, I would say, are taking advantage of it and a lot are being left behind. You know, mm. that's. That, that's how, uh, you know, uh, I'm 33 now, but, you know, when I, when I was, uh, you know, 25, 26, that's how a, a 25, 26 year old who never picked up a hammer was able to start a construction company and do a quarter million in sales the first month in a random city with no existing network of suppliers or contractors. Or I, I didn't even know that gypsum board was drywall. <laughs> and, I, you know, I'll, I'll never forget it. I remember being in Home Depot running around trying to find these materials and the contractor I brought along with me because obviously I knew nothing was laughing at me because I was thinking so hard that I actually broke out in a sweat. You know, like I, <laughs> he's like, man, he's like, are you OK? Like you're, you're sweating. And I wasn't and sorry. I wasn't running around at that point. He's like, man, you're thinking so hard that you're sweating. That's hilarious. <laughs> and um, and and you know that like I really feel like anybody who is not putting significant resources or attention or effort into marketing are going to be left behind. Okay. And and and, and to elaborate on that, like, well, that, why don't we do this? Why don't we go back and let's let's break it down. So you spoke about brand and you spoke about branding um, before we even get into website and that kind of stuff. So let's talk a little bit about the branding aspect because I know this is something that um, we come across. Every daily, pretty much with every web project that we build, you know, we look at, okay, well, what does their branding look like? Is there, does their brand represent the type of client they're trying to attract? And so I'm interested to see what your take is on um, the way that you developed, you know, Canadian General Motors branding, or, uh, <laughs> General Motors, Canadian General <laughs> Contractors around, you know, making sure that your brand, your logo, your design speaks to your ideal customer, your customer avatar, whatever you want to call that? Yeah. So when we were first coming up with names and the reason why we chose the, uh, the structure of uh, the city and general contractor uh, was specifically to cater to SEO. So anybody that knows SEO probably heard of EMDs, <laughs> exact okay. matching domain. So yeah. when you search Ottawa general contractors, you'll just show up right away. And, and that was the, the, the original strategy behind it. But what happened later on is we realized that there's a lot more to, to that strategy. And, and Google uh, figured just, it out. <laughs> what's that? And Google figured it out. Yeah, yeah, Google figured it out. But you know what? Yeah, p- people keep saying, oh, EMDs are not that relevant anymore. But I still think that they're pretty relevant. Yeah, I think they I are mean, as well. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I know I know that Google is like super sophisticated and, and, and they know everything, but there's still little loopholes here and there. But yeah, what, what ended up happening with that is a sense of familiarity. And, and you know, a brand has to convey so much. It's, if you can imagine as, you know, um, a brand being the personal representative of the company when when a prospective client meets that brand or meets that that representative of the company what do they portray mm-hmm. and what we did uh, a few years ago was we created um you know a, a prospective client avatar and we put together a series of characteristics that would enc- encourage buying decisions by these prospective clients and we had to make sure that our brand represented that or communicated that. So what are some of those characteristics? What did that avatar look like? 
something just as simple as like professional, you know, like, and, you know, with a clean, a clean logo as, as a good starting place, like do not put, I mean, I, I, you know, I hope I'm not offending anybody, but do not put a hammer to, to, to as a letter in your logo name. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like get a professional graphic designer to build your logo. Like, it's yeah. very, very easy to identify what's professional and what's not. Yeah. So, just, just, just professionalism and how that's portrayed. You know, like I can't put just a magnetic decal on my on my vans. I gotta completely wrap that whole van because that looks professional. Right. You know, and, and, and sure you might not have the resources, but if you don't, then it's really an all or nothing. Don't yeah. do it then. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's no point because you're actually hurting yourself at that point. Right. So portraying professionalism, uh, a, a sense of familiarity, right. Uh, people want to work with contractors that they're familiar with, whether they're familiar because they work in their community, they've worked with neighbors, they've, they've worked in their city. Uh, and such, you know, yeah. it's funny. I'll never, for, I'll never forget this one time. I mean, uh, to go back to when we first expanded to Vancouver about six or seven years ago, mm-hmm. and I remember that one of our clients, uh, we had a shared work office, so it's like a co-work space. I don't know what you guys call it in Australia, kind of yeah, like yeah. where you can like rent out an office there. Yeah, co-working. Yep. Yeah, and and everything's white labeled, so there's no like company brand. So like whoever's coming in might think like you own the whole floor. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, uh, we had one of our clients come in a month or two later and he's like, man, like I, I just ran into like my, my mother-in-law in the lobby. Like this isn't your whole office. I'm like, no, we just kind of rent a little office here. And he was the whole time he thought we owned the whole floor and we're talking about like, <laughs> like 40 offices. Right. Yeah. Because, but part of that was the brand that we're reflecting. So if you're going to, if you're going to reflect professionalism in a beautifully designed logo, you need to carry that throughout the client buying journey, right? right? Like you can't, you can't have this awesome logo, this awesome website and okay, you got a lead, but show up in your overalls with paint splattered all over you and being 10 minutes late. Like, like part of reflecting professionalism in your brand is a lot more than just like your logo. It's, it's how you carry yourself, how your uniforms look, you know, what, what does your marketing collateral look like? Yeah. You know, the, you know, what, what's, what's your, what's your sales process? Like, are you running in there, taking a few measurements and running out? Like, you know, we, we, we make a point to tell clients, look, we're going to take some measurements. We're going to sit you down. We're going to go over our sales kit and we're going to literally talk about each page that we've got in there. Yeah. You know, it's so, so yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot to it than just a professional logo, but it's a great place to start. <laughs> so you kind of touched on something which I, I like to, um, I sort of encapsulated, I've, I mean, I've done presentations in the past and I've called it representation and it ties into, um, again, like we said, the ecosystem, but you know, it also brings in things like your brand, it brings in who you want to target, it brings in the type of work you want to deliver on, you know, the do you want to target, you know, are, are you looking for the, uh, you know, the prestige sort of market? Are you looking more towards just your standard residential? Are you trying to target construction and development? All this kind of stuff because it, it, it does kind of correlate throughout your, your different different parts of your different collateral, you know, like if you the way that you, that your logo looks will often reflect, um, you know, the type of work you want to do. Um, the con- the content that you've got on your website will often be written in a way that will communicate to your ideal customer. Be that you know, if you're working for you know large building companies, and you know your your, your content and you, the way that you speak is going to be a little bit different to the way that you'd be speaking to you know mums and dads and that kind of stuff. So I think like taking it back a, a notch, you know, to having having a clear indication of who your ideal customer is, it will certainly help you from a branding point of view um, in, in order to ascertain, you know, what that collateral looks like across the board. Yeah, absolutely. You know, being consistent with your message from the first point of contact to the final final uh, sign-off is, is very important because, you know, in my industry, it doesn't take one meeting to close a client. Right. Sometimes it's many meetings. And last thing you want is to be on that final meeting only for them to to have some doubts because of an an inconsistent piece of your message. We interrupt this podcast today to talk to you very quickly about Tradey Web Guys content creation program. That program has been designed specifically for trade-based organizations as a way that 
you guys as trade business owners can start creating content that enables you to engage better with your customers and your potential customers. It will enable you to build trust and build rapport because what you're doing is you're investing in educating them. The biggest problem that we see with our customers today is that they're not regularly updating their websites. And that's a problem because first of all, the search engines are looking for that. And second of all, potential customers are also looking for it. Trading Web Guys content creation program has been specifically designed to help you get regular, relevant content on your website consistently every month. We know that it's hard when you're out there on the tools, and we know that sometimes you don't always have the time to be able to do these things yourself. So we're taking it off your hands for you. It's a service that we're offering for you guys. We want to make sure that you're getting this done because we know how important it is. Anyway, head across to tradywebguys.com.au forward slash content, fill in the form, and one of our representatives will come back to you. So I'm curious. I'm curious in regard to that, and if if we're going to be jumping into this, you know, our next one of the following episodes, then let me know. But I'd like to know a little bit about that um, uh, that sales cycle for you guys, and how you how you manage that. Because I know with building, you know, it typically is a longer sales cycle. And one of the things we've started to implement with a lot of our um, clients that have a longer sales cycle is. Uh, like a communication pattern, which sees them engaging with their customers um, throughout the part, throughout that, um, I suppose, that process where they initially come to you for information primarily, not so much a quote, but more information. And then, you know, throughout that process, which could take, you know, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, even who knows, um, you know, how are you nurturing that potential customer to the point where they're ready to get a quote or they're ready to take the next step? Yeah, so I mean, uh, uh, I'll I'll touch on it a little bit more. Is going to go into the segment of stop working for free, time is money. But I'll touch mm-hmm. on it uh, briefly. It's a lot easier to ask somebody for a couple thousand bucks as opposed to a couple hundred thousand dollars. Right. And and when you're able to get them committed, there's almost a psychological uh, situation that happens there where they've kind of already committed to the second step. Right. But but it's a lot easier to commit to a few thousand as opposed to a hundred thousand dollars, right? But what a, what that also does is it buys you some time to build a relationship with the clients to get that bigger close, mm-hmm. right? So so what we did is we basically split split up our sales cycle between design and build. Another uh, reason why a design build business will scale you to millions of dollars is because you know when you're asking for a design. Uh, service uh, when you want to sell a design service for two three thousand dollars, it's easier it's easier pill to swallow, mm-hmm. right? But what, what something interesting happens there, right? Is that it allows you to deliver on a better product because when you're putting a little bit more upfront time on designing and organizing and the pre construction steps, then you're less likely to uh, deal with variables that could upset the client later on. I mean, there's always those variables, but what I really think it does is it minimizes that gap. Right. If that makes sense. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like like oftentimes every, uh, contractors are expected to give a free estimate, spend 1 hour with the client and somehow magically put together this 50,000 or 100,000 dollar uh, scope of work right. and expect no surprises later on. And, yeah, and, yeah. and 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 like I don't understand that because sometimes it takes us 3 to 4 weeks to design and properly plan and organize these projects. And we still have, you know, uh, variables that are missed just because there's like hundreds of moving parts. Exactly right. right. Yeah. 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 I feel like we're going to jump into that in episode two. So we'll, we'll skip back to the, the marketing side of things. Now I'm curious as to talking a little bit about, first of all, I suppose the lead generation process, but then second of all, and, and most importantly, being able to deliver and facilitate on those leads. So how have you guys structured that? Because, you know, if you're turning, you know, a couple of million bucks a month, some months, um, how, how does that look from a, um, a facilitation perspective? See, that's a good question. And that's really the magic. Nobody would really ever think of that. Right? They think, all right, I generate leads. Sales are naturally going to happen, right? Nope. Mm. <laughs> uh, it, it's actually funny. We generate so many leads that I have to like beg my sales guys to like follow up on calls. Like I tell them, like, in what industry are people like literally given like 10 leads a day? You know yeah. what I mean? Like it's like, but, but, but they kind of get in that nasty cycle. But um, generating our leads, you know what it starts with? Um, it starts with a high converting website. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, and I always say, like, imagine a website as like a storefront, you know, like you're, you're not going to have 
an ugly, um, you know, unproportionate laid out s- storefront space, right? So why would you have one as a website? Yeah. And if you can almost imagine your website as a digital storefront, you can pay for traffic to go to your digital storefront, just like you can open you know, a retail storefront in, downtown, in a downtown city and get lots of traffic, but nobody's going to come in if they don't like what they see, right? right? And nobody's going to be making buying decisions if the clothes are wrinkled or if they're not hung properly or if they're torn, right? So, yeah. so it all really starts with like a highly optimized converting website. And then you bring the traffic, yeah. right? So the traffic yeah. Well, this is, I was going to say, it, it, this is, <laughs> man, if I had a dollar for every time I've said this in the last, you know, 18 months uh, through the podcast and then at, at presentations and to clients and things like that, like people get so caught up or, you know, people that come to us, I mean, we get people call every day and they're like, oh, I need more leads, I need more leads, I need more leads. And my answer is always the same, you know, like it's not so much about the amount of leads you get. If you're getting 10 leads a day and you're converting one of them, like, that's one lead a day, really. Oh, that one, you know, I suppose, um, if you, uh, what would you call it? That one qualified lead, let's call it. Right. If you can convert, if you can increase your conversions, you know, to two of those out of 10, then you've basically doubled your conversion, which means you've doubled the amount of qualified leads that you've got and you're still getting the same traffic. And people get so caught up in this churn and burn mentality of more leads, more leads, more leads, more leads, more leads. And they tend to neglect that conversion factor, which really is, is what it's all about. It's not about more leads. It's about conversion. It's about taking what you've got and, and, and optimizing that. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And then, and then, yeah, there comes the sales process, right? Like, are they taking two days to call leads? Well, right. I mean, there was, there, there was a Harvard study that was, uh, that was put together and they said that if you call a lead within the first hour, you are 90% more likely to close that lead than if you called them the hour after that. And then, it's, huh. and then it significantly drops you know, after every other hour and then every other day. So yeah, if you're taking two days to call a lead back, well then, you know what, like there's, there's a reason why you're not converting them, right? Like just mm. small little things like that go a long way. That's interesting. Right? Yeah. Cause I know a lot of the, a lot of the guys and I've, you know, read a number of books and listen to podcasts and there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, I suppose, to and fro in regard to that time frame. Like some people are like, well, if you reply too quickly, then you look too needy. And like, and then people say, oh, if you reply too, you know, if you reply too quickly, you look like you're, you're just sitting there waiting for a job and that kind of stuff. But I, I tend to agree. I think if you if you get an, a lead come through, then at least make some sort of contact with them. Um, actually, it kind of leads on to the next thing I wanted to talk to you about, which is, was the qualification process. Obviously, you don't want to work for everyone, and I know we certainly don't want to work for everyone. Like we, to be fair, we probably I'd say it's about fifty fifty with the amount of leads that we get. Um, you know, we we only really um, want to qualify. For, well, we only really half of them suit our profile, basically our customer profile, and we have a like a, a process in place which kind of helps us um, decide yeah. on who that half is. How does that look for you guys? Yeah, so our qualified customer uh, is somebody who has money on hand. Uh, whether they've got the cash or whether they've got financing in place. <laughs> they've got a project that requires multiple tradesmen. Uh, they, they won't see value in a company like us for like a one-off trade. Like, um, you know, if they just need like a carpenter to like frame up a wall as an example, like right. they, they get value from us when we manage multiple tradesmen. <laughs> so need to have money ready to go. They, they, uh, their project requires multiple tradesmen. And our minimum is typically about $20,000. If they don't have $20,000, uh, then yeah. we're, we're, we're not ready to go. Uh, we're not the right company for them. Yeah. And, and our thing is, is, you know what? We'll come and visit your space and take some measurements and, and you know, talk to you. But, and, and, and we tell them this on the first phone call, they must come into our office and give us their time. Right. So if we're going to invest our time, we want them to invest their time. And if they're not ready to do that, if they're one of those guys like, oh, no, no, just, you know what, just uh, send me the scope of work in an email, yeah. um, then, then, then we don't even send it to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. And we say, too bad, come into the office or, you know, we're not dealing. Like, we don't, we don't try to get involved in this business of, um, 
of just being a company to quote for the sake of having a quote. Yeah. Right. We don't, we, we don't like doing that. So, so yeah, so our qualified comp, uh, client or prospect has got money on hand, multiple trades, minimum 20 K. Um, and they're, they're within the vicinity that, that we service. I think that's a really important thing that you've touched on there. It's something that we do as well. Like we always get the cust. Uh, oh, sorry. We get our prospects to make a time commitment to us. And that for us comes in the form of completing a web form, um, which is quite detailed. But uh, we just know that people that are willing to take that step and complete that form are typically the type of people that we want to work with because you can tell straight away if they're serious or not. And the people that can't be bothered doing it or they haven't got the time, (laughs) inverted commas, then they're not really the people that we want to be working with because it's just like they're out there price shopping or you know they don't i just know from our experience like putting that process in place has been really really good for us because we only speak with companies that we know are the ones that we want to work with at the end of the day yeah i mean i don't blame you you know and especially in construction like you can literally spend a whole day working for free right and and nobody even being grateful for it <laughs> yeah right it's it, it's it's crazy right so like we get lots of calls heck i mean one of my guys got a call today for for um, like a restoration and and, an insurance job. But we get lots of those because all they're trying to do is get a quote from a contractor, try to up their buyout from the insurance company. And what a waste of time, right? So, I mean, we don't really mess around with that kind of stuff. So we, we, um, because we get lots of lead, uh, we are very careful on how our time is spent. Mm -hmm. But also I got to be very careful in making sure that we're not over-qualifying. And I've noticed that happening. Right. And, and what we what I've put in place is uh, certain KPIs, so key performance indicators that need to be met weekly. So in some cases, if we don't have enough KPIs, we'll maybe entertain somebody who's not necessarily the perfect prospect. Because I'd, I'd rather have my guys meeting people than not meeting anybody, right? And and, and those. Those KPIs revolve around in-office meetings, site consultations, and, and project walkthroughs to show prospective clients some of our, pro- our existing projects. Mm, isn't that interesting? So I was going to ask you what those KPIs look like because I think sometimes we get caught up in, and the listeners out there will relate to this, it, like people get caught up in how many sales you got, how many leads you got, how many this you got, blah, 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 how much money have we made, blah, blah, blah. When in reality, like the KPI is not necessarily that. You need to take the focus off those things and put the focus on how many meetings have we had with people, how many follow-up phone calls have we made, how many proposals have we sent out, like the, 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 more, the stuff that sort of happens in the back a bit more. Exactly, exactly. And you know what? Like I found myself a few years ago you know, coming into the sales meeting and talking to one of my guys and saying, you know, what do you mean you don't have 300 grand in sales for the month? Right. Like, that's your goal. That's what you got to produce. And it's like, it's kind of a little too late situation, right? right? Because like at that point, the month is already gone. And like, yeah. am I really motivating him to get more sales by asking him why he hasn't gotten sales? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, So we had to reverse engineer that a little bit. And then when we realized, okay, well, you know what? We're getting sales when we're getting in front of people. right? So we had to identify what did getting in front of people look like? And that looked like a site consultation or a home visit. So the initial meeting there and then meetings in our office and then meeting uh, project walkthroughs, which uh, show off our existing projects Yeah. to, because like often enough we got stuck in the situation too. Well, send me a reference, send me a reference. And when you're prospecting like 10 clients a week, like your, your past clients get annoyed if you're calling them. 10 times a week, right? So <laughs> right. We, we, we completely, we found a solution to that. And it's like, you know what? Um, I've got something better for you than a reference. I'm actually going to take you to one of my jobs right now. And we actually built a whole referral program around it. So I, I, I give my uh, clients gift cards mm-hmm. if, they, uh, if they allow us to do a walkthrough in their home and if they also speak well about us. So you, you often get these homeowners that are really excited and like can't wait to have prospects come through their home <laughs> to completely incentivize them. Where it was the opposite. Ba- you know, Getting somebody to give you a reference for the third time was like pulling teeth. And I understand. Heck, I don't want anybody... I don't want to keep talking to strangers, you know, like I love you guys, but like, I don't want to keep talking to people. Right. My, yeah. my wife's a great example of that she hates talking on the phone. Like literally if it's wow. not her family or me, like she won't talk on the phone. Jesus. That is, that is very <laughs> unusual for a woman. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it was great when we were just getting to know each other. I was like, Oh, she's not blowing up my phone right now. I love this girl. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Cool. So, um, let's go back to, Conscious of the fact that this episode's coming to a close, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the framework. So we've spoken about 
We've spoken about the fact that you need to be have a conversion process in place for your leads and you've got to take the focus not so much off leads but more on the conversion, um, which is awesome. Uh, we've talk, spoken about um, the website. You've got to make sure your website is converting. And of course, anyone for the listeners out there, that's what we do. So you can reach out to us. <laughs> Quick plug. Um, and, then, and then what I want to talk now about is, I suppose, the lead side of things. So where do you guys generate your leads from? Is it all online? Do you do offline? Do you do letterbox drops? Do you run ads in newspapers? Do you do TV, radio? Like where does it come from? So I would say that the the majority of our leads come from uh, from online. Yep. Uh, we do some offline, like trade shows. Um, yep. Very, I'm very selective on which trade shows because I've had some being terrible. But <laughs> the majority come from <laughs> come from online, uh, specifically AdWords. However, we've just tried a new strategy on. Facebook using mm-hmm. custom audiences mm-hmm. uh, that's driven our ad spend per visitor or per action significantly low. That's been working great, mm-hmm. um, but for the for the most part, is driven through Bing, Google, uh, Facebook. Okay, cool. So, do you guys with your current website? Do you have like a lot of SEO running on that site? Do you guys invest in SEO or is it purely Google AdWords, you know, SEM, search engine marketing, that kind of stuff? Uh, we used to invest heavily on SEO back in the day, um, yeah. you know, through uh, through blogs and getting backlinks and doing yeah. guest blogs and, and, and doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, invested heavily in, in Google Local, although that's not, that's kind of SEO, kind of not, like yeah, uh, okay, through building yep. citations and, yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and whatnot. But to be honest, we I think because we've invested so heavy in that the past 10 years, uh, the last two years, we haven't needed to. And it yeah. kind of just yep. kind of does its thing, right? So I yep. stopped investing in that. But yeah. One of the big indicators that we see, Ferris, because um, uh, we do a lot of audits now and we know obviously we're pretty heavily involved in the marketing space for trade businesses and one of the big indicators that constantly pops up for us um, on our client sites or you know people that we audit, businesses that we audit, is that there's not enough content going on to sites. And Google obviously loves to see uh, you know your websites being updated with new fresh content. As a result, we built an entire product around it. And only yesterday, I recorded a video on how effective that has been for the purpose of search engine optimization. Now, I'm just curious, do you guys, are you in the space of adding content to your website in the form of, you know, project galleries and case studies and all that kind of stuff? Um, you know what? As of recently, not as much as we should be. Yeah. Um, but I definitely think that it's, it's very important to do so. Mm-hmm. But we haven't in the last little bit. But we used to invest in that significantly. Yeah. You know, uh, it's, 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 not, it's not cheap and it's not easy and it takes a lot of resources to build out content. But, uh, but it's definitely still very important and relevant. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, part of our strategy, right? Because we've got a lot of resources. What I like to do is just like to flood AdWords, and I just like, I yeah. try to make it very difficult for my competitors by making, uh, yeah. by my making my bids very expensive because yeah. I can afford to do so. Right. But the guy, the guy that works out of his pickup truck, can't afford to spend four or five grand <laughs> a month on AdWords. Right, and so what sort of um, what sort of keywords are you targeting within your AdWords campaigns? Uh, you know, re- as of recently, because Ottawa is going through a, cu- a custom home boom, we've been doing a lot for custom homes. Yeah, we we do a lot revolving around kitchens. We find that to be the most popular. Uh, the key, the kitchen campaign are the keywords that are the most popular. Okay, like so, renovations. And- yeah, yeah, you know, uh, you know, kitchen renovations, um, you know, countertop renovation or countertop replacement. Just because you find that a lot of these bigger projects typically start off with the kitchen and right. end up at getting added on from there. I mean, right. I think that's something that we 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 found. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. All right, interesting. <clears throat> All right, cool. Well, look, I think that's been really good. So, I suppose as a, as a general framework, when we're talking about creating you know, a million dollar design build business in this episode, you know, building won't make you a million bucks marketing will. For me, the key takeaways, and by all means, I'm, I want your feedback on this, um, Ferris, as well. Um, primarily, make sure you've got your, uh, your branding and your, um, I suppose, your avatar down pat so you know who you're targeting and you know the type of work that you want to be delivering and you know where you're, you know, even if you want to call it your vertical or your niche, like where you're focusing your attention, because you don't want to be everything to everyone. You really want to make sure that you can specialize and you can be the expert in the certain thing that you want to do. Once you've got that established, then you can go about creating a website, which is designed really around that avatar and communicates to that specifically. 
whatever that might look like for your business. But of course, you want to make sure that you know the the key focus on your website is not so much. Um, well, the key focus has to be around conversion. You know, like once somebody gets to your website, what are you doing on that site to help them to take the next step? Once you've got that in place, then you can have the conversation around generating leads because you know that once leads get to the website, they're in a position then where they're going to convert. And then once you've got that all happening, you want to make sure that you've got at the back end, you're able to deliver on the following up and the, you know, speaking to those customers and making sure that you're, you know, the next stages of your sales cycle are being fulfilled. So you're delivering on all the leads that you guys are getting. What have I missed? No, that, that's it. And that's perfect. You know, and then, and the last thing I'd, I'd like to add to that is leave marketing to the professionals, folks. You know, I had a conversation with somebody on Site Shed the other day and he was wondering why his Facebook ad wasn't, wasn't getting approved. And I asked him, I'm like, would you get a guy who's never built a deck to build one for you? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. you know, even it, you wouldn't, right? So let, let the professionals do it because sometimes you could actually be doing more harm to your marketing uh, ecosystem than yeah. good. I know it's crazy. I mean, to be fair, I know, I know like some of these, some of the guys within the community there, they're, they're starting up and they might be, you know, trying to conserve costs without realizing how expensive it is to do some of this stuff yourself. Like in the long term, you're like, yeah. if you would just let us do it for you, you have no idea how much money it would make you and save you. But anyway, uh, that's, <clears throat> I feel like that's a conversation that's relevant across the board with, with lots of businesses. People try and, people try and wear too many hats and it takes, it, it waters down. You know, it takes the focus off uh, what they should be doing, which you know could be things like following up quotes or you know actually doing proposals and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> That's a conversation for another time. Ferris, all right, cool. Let's wrap this one up and let's come back with the following episode where we're going to be talking about um, stop working for free. Time is money. What do you reckon? Sounds good to me, man. Rock and roll. All right. Well, listeners, you've been listening to the Sideshade Podcast. Um, I've got my man, Ferris as Elzabar. Did I get it right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. You're good. Elzebar, rock and roll. Uh, from Ottawa General Contractors joining me on this series. Um, this series is called Creating a Million Dollar Design Build Business. And that was the first episode called Building Won't Make Your Million Bucks Marketing Will. Stay tuned for the next one, which is called Stop Working for Free. Time is Money. Um, if you've got any comments or if you wanted to get any follow up, questions answered. Um, the best place to probably do that was is in the site shed uh, Facebook group. It's a private group. You can get it across the site shed and you can uh, to Facebook and you can find that private group there. Um, um, Ferris is in that group and he'll be able to answer those questions. Um, otherwise you can um, email Ferris F A R E S at Ottawa General Contractors.com and he is I am Ferris I am F A R E S uh, on social media. All right. Let's wrap this one up and we will speak to you in the following episode. Thank you for listening to another episode of Toolbox Talks. If you're liking what you hear, then you can head across to the siteshed.com where you can join our community by signing up to our Toolbox Talks. Uh, You'll get sent a weekly notification, which is basically a highlight of everything that we've spoken about during that week, along with any other industry news that may be relevant or specific to the trades. If you're enjoying the show, you can head across to iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud where you can leave us a review. Uh, That would be fantastic, and all the reviews get read out in the show. Uh, Likewise, if you have any friends or colleagues that you think would benefit from the show and the, the episodes that we create, then please go ahead and share it with them.